The ethnically Han Ming dynasty, which took control of China in the 14th century, governed over a number of other ethnic groups, like the Miao, Yao, Mongols, and the Jurchen tribes of Manchuria in the north. Although they had once been powerful by the early 1600s, a series of natural disasters, financial problems caused by European silver, and a string of bad wars left them in a weakened state. Plus, in the north, the Jurchen tribes had been united under the chieftain Nehachi of the Asin Gyoro clan. In May 1618, encouraged by the Ming's weakness and fighting during the Japanese invasion of Korea, he proclaimed his seven grievances, which explained how the Ming had mistreated him and his clan. This acted as the de facto declaration of war between his Jurchen tribes and the Ming Empire. The Jurchen initially lacked the numbers to push far south, but over the following years they developed a large diverse army, organised in the Eight Banner system, and encouraged many ethnicities into their ranks. For instance, they promised wives to Han defectors. However, the Ming were still largely able to hold off the invasion thanks to their technology, notably cannons, and the Great Wall. So, the fighting continued for over 20 years. The church had strengthened their position north of the wall considerably in 1636, when they finally invaded Joseon, Korea, then a Ming tributary state, and forced them to submit to their rule. But it wasn't until 1644 that they were able to make a breakthrough. Back in the Ming Empire, a famine struck Shaanxi, and peasants under Li Che Chong began to revolt. With Ming troops occupied in the north, the large peasant army was able to occupy Beijing within a couple months, and Li proclaimed himself emperor of the new Shun dynasty, while the Ming emperor killed himself. So, a Ming general, Wu Sangai, opened the wall for the Jurchens, now named Manchus, in the hopes that they would crush the rebels. The Manchus, now under the leadership of Hong Tai Ji, Nehachi's son, defeated the Shun at Shanghai Pass and quickly captured Beijing, forcing the Shun to retreat to Xi'an in the west while the Manchu established their own dynasty, the Qing. The Qing now controlled the north, but the new emperor, Shun Qi, was just a child, so his uncle, Dorgon, took control of the empire as regent. Dorgon set about repressing Ming loyalists in the north while sending an army to attack the Shun in Xi'an. Li Shi Cheng fled Xi'an when the Manchus arrived and died shortly afterwards in 1645, ending the short-lived Shun dynasty and leaving the Manchus free to push south on Ming territory. The Ming loyalists had established their new capital in Nanjing and crowned a new emperor, Hong Guan. But they suffered from crop failures and their own unpaid, discontent armies pillaged the countryside. Plus, the armies they still controlled were often corrupt and many deserted. So they were unable to stop the Qing's advance into the prosperous provinces of Jiangnan on the lower Yangtze River. The towns of Yangzhou, Suzhou and Hangzhou fell by May 1645, and hundreds of thousands were slaughtered in the process. Many more were killed when people rebelled against the Qing's new law, forcing people to wear the traditional Manchu Q hairstyle. The Ming Emperor Hong Guan fled Nanjing, leaving the city to be captured shortly afterwards, but he too was taken prisoner and later executed. A new Ming Emperor, Long Wu, was crowned in Fuzhou. He was initially protected in the city by Zhong Ji Long, a former pirate who commanded a large army and navy. But elsewhere, the Qing continued to advance and Ming territory was further divided when a pretender to the throne, the Gongying Emperor, was crowned. Plus, the Qing took Sichuan in 1646. The province had been under the control of the Yellow Tiger, a peasant who, with his rebel army, seized the city of Chengdu a couple years earlier. He had slaughtered a vast amount of the region's population, so much so that it shrank by around 75%, making the region relatively easy pickings for the Qing. Then, sensing the impending defeat of the Ming, Zhong Ji Long defected to the Qing, allowing them to take Fuzhou and the Ming Emperor in October 1646. Two final claimants to the Ming throne emerged. The Shao Wu Emperor was crowned in Guangzhou, but the Qing quickly captured him and the city within just over a month. This left the Qing in control of all of mainland China, while the Yongli Emperor became the last surviving Ming Emperor. Emperor Yongli continued fighting against and fleeing from the Qing until 1662, when he was caught by a large Qing army as he fled into Burma. The final Ming's loyalist stronghold, however, was in Taiwan. In 1661, the son of Zhong Ji Long, Ko Xing Ga, successfully ousted the Dutch from the island and hoped to retake the mainland. But his family ruled over the island until the 1680s, when it was captured by the Qing. Although the wars were devastating in terms of loss of life, probably around 25 million people died, the Qing dynasty managed to subdue rebellions, expand and rule until the early 20th century. 